Hey, what's happening, folks? Welcome back to Raspberry Pi Tutorial Part 9B. Uh, I had originally intended to make this one long tutorial for Part 9, but I couldn't fit it into the time that I had, so this is just a follow-up to Part 9. And today we're basically going to be doing the same thing that we did before, except that now we are going to redo the card that I used in the last tutorial and partition it back to the FAT32 format that we started with. And we're also going to take a look at reformatting drives and partitioning drives from within the desktop graphical user interface, so stick around. All right, so let's say that we are done using the drive that we set up earlier on the Pi and we want to repurpose this card to use in a digital camera. Well, we could just pop it out and uh, stick it into the camera and reformat, but hey, that's just way too easy and we wouldn't really learn anything. So let's do it on the Pi. If you still have the drive plugged in, let's make sure that the drive is unmounted. So let's CD to somewhere else, let's say my home directory, and then uh, sudo umount slash dev slash sda1, and then let's unmount the other partition that we made. So sudo umount slash dev slash sda2. Now we're going to need to fire up fdisk again to change the partition table on our sda device. So sudo fdisk slash dev slash sda and let's look at the current table and there are two partitions that we created last time so let's delete those so we're going to use d and let's start with partition two first so two enter and then d again to delete partition one and here we don't have to put the one in because uh, there was only one partition left and it uh, just did it by default and let's make sure both of those are gone. So P, yep, gone. And so now let's create one big partition for our FAT32 drive. So N, and then we want it to be a primary. Uh, we want partition C1. And then uh, we want to use the default here. And then also the default last sector. Let's just make sure we have our partition correct. Let's say P. And now we still have an eight gig uh, Linux partition here and we want to change it to a uh, Windows compatible FAT32 so how do we do that so let's see what partition types we have available using L so that's L for list types available and let's look around here and there it is we have Windows 95 FAT32 so we need to use the B option and in order to change the type we need to do T and then the type designation that we just found was B. And let's make sure that works. So P. And now we're back to what we started with. We have one large 8 gig partition that is uh, Windows FAT32. So let's write that to the drive with W. Enter. And now we've exited. Uh, so the new partition and its type is written to the drive. And now we just need to uh, format this drive with a FAT32 file system. And in order to do this, we're going to need to install a DOS file system tools package. So at this point, do sudo apt-get install dosfs tools. All right, and as soon as that finishes, we now have the correct tools to format using FAT32. So let's get to it. So sudo mkfs dash t v fat slash dev slash sda1 and once that file system is created you're done you now have the card back to the way it was with the fat32 format and it's ready to be used in a digital camera now there's also a graphical way to set up drives as well but since we need the uh, USB port for the mouse that it would normally be plugged into, uh, I wanted to teach you the command line stuff first. And if you have a hub, you can try to do this graphically, but keep in mind, powering a hub, a card, plus a keyboard and a mouse might make the Pi a little unstable if the power voltage drops too low. But let's try it out and see. You're, you're definitely better off using a, um, a powered USB hub that draws power from its own power supply, uh, which is what I'm using right now. I don't think this will work with an unpowered hub, uh, but you can definitely try it if you want to. I just can't guarantee that an unpowered hub will work. 
Uh, but anyway, let's uh, fire up our X Windows session, our uh, our desktop graphical user interface. So we use Start X, and we're going to need to install a, a tool called Gparted or Gpart AED or however you want to say it. It's basically the GNU partitioning uh, editor. And so let's do that with sudo apt-get, and let's make sure we have the most up-to-date package information. So we'll say update, and this might take quite a while to run, so I'm gonna try to fast forward through this. And as soon as this is done, our software package sources have been up-to-date, or updated, and uh, we're gonna need to install gparted. So sudo apt-get install gpart ed and this also might take a few minutes to install and then we're going to type sudo gpart ed and uh, once this is up here you can see our drives and their partitions and uh, if you don't already have the SD card plugged in let's go ahead and plug that into uh, the powered USB hub and click over here to refresh devices. And from the drop down menu on the right, let's select the SDA device, which is our card. And here you can see the FAT32 partition that we just created earlier. And I'm not gonna go through the whole process of uh, formatting this again for Linux. You can probably figure this out. It's pretty easy. Uh, but basically you can do the same thing with gparted that you did with with fdisk but in a graphical way just remember to hit the green arrow apply button to write your changes and you can also format partitions here instead of using mkfs and uh, makes it a lot easier to have everything in one tool well anyway that is it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed diving into creating partitions and file systems and uh keep in mind i only used an sd card here for uh, speed and simplicity today just to make it easy to show you how to do this but formatting large hard drives works pretty much the same way just make sure you use an ext4 file system for large drives and not fat32 fat32 is terribly inefficient for really large drives and uh, if you need a drive that can be read by both Windows and Linux, use NTFS. And if you need help on that, just let me know. Uh, basically, you need to install the NTFS package in order to use it. I think it's NTFS-3G or something like that. Anyway, that's about it for today. If you have any questions, be sure to subscribe and comment, and I'll try to help if I can. As always, thank you for watching.